Hello and welcome to this video. We got a new aircraft in the Caronado fleet. Caronado has released the Fokker 50 and finally I can show you some content that has just been released. Um, as well as we are here at Olbo Airport that I also have been previewing a bit here lately to give uh, Vidane Design some credit for the rendition of their X-Plane 11 version. But it is the Fokker 50. It comes with quite some different liveries. We can quickly cycle through them um, so you can see what is included with this particular package even though you can see it on their website but just to do it in a general manner so you can see the different liveries available for this aircraft the visuals are great do note that I am running um, the graphic settings in the middle um, and that's basically because I'm both running Olbo and I'm running the Carnado aircraft, even though um, it runs nice. Um, but for my system, it is the memory that is the main issue here, um, as I do not have the latest available hardware. Um, even though it's not bad, the, the specs I'm using, but it's not up to what is recently released. So, there we got the different liveries. There are some static elements. Um, the ground power units and the static elements, as you can see, wheel clocks and, and such, and cones. And as you can see, really, really nice, shiny aircraft. Especially if you look at the bluish color here, how it actually is with the reflection. Pretty realistic, of course. I know some of the areas reflections might not be quite as in reality, but that's known for for all aircraft more or less. So, what a Anyway, it looks very, very stunning and amazing, just like we know from Carnado and Alabeo. Then you have the doors that you can operate. Do note that it is the same sound for every door. Um, if I move inside here, it is the same sound for It sound a bit odd. Um, yeah. Then we got the static elements, of course, and the windows reflection and the instrument reflection, just as we know from Caronado and Alavio. Then we have the camera and volume um, that can be set. Even though, from my perspective, I'm not a huge, uh, I'm not using those camera views because in X-Plane it is so luckily that we can move to a position. Just press the control and use the num numpad to give it a specific uh, number of the uh, the numpad. So um, I find that just as useful as you can see. I can move to the same spots of course, but I could also assign whatever I want, so if I want to look from this direction, I can assign that. Um, just so, just if you're not uh, aware of it. The zoom level, 
and the autopilot. Uh, and the autopilot actually also has um, some features for the, the screen. Um, yeah. Um, and in order to to um, remove the yoke, uh, you might sit. Mm, where is it? It is actually down here at the bottom. We have seen that in some other add-ons, and it's very nice. Uh, because up here we actually have some light for the, the yoke, uh, but since we do not have the electricity switched on right now, uh, it's not uh, functioning. Then you have some levers, and they are actually uh, animated. Very nice that you can open the floor ventilation and, and fresh air scope can be open and closed just as we would like to um, the window I'm not quite sure because hmm, I haven't figured out the mechanism right but I you you see this video just as I have uh, downloaded it so I have not um, in going that uh, through the aircraft um, that much, I just jump in and see some of the, the things, and then I would share it with you, just like I'm doing, uh, experiencing the main project. Um, and even though we can remove, and the, pe the pedals can't be adjusted. Um, not that I'm a, a, a fan of that or anything, it's just that some of the stuff is doing it and others is not. And that was just what I wanted to point out. And that's fairly fine for me. It's not a problem as such. Not at all. Armrest can be erased if you like. Put away. Stowed. really nice. I really like the view from here if you are airborne and such. Uh, it looks very nice. Um, and now I just found the windshield wipers. I actually was wondering where it actually was, but it seems to be here. Okay. Uh, and we have the ability to move the light around. Nice. Nice little touch there. I remember the first time I actually saw it. I'm not sure if it was the very first add-on that made, but the the uh, Fly Sim actually made that option for the 737, and I really, really loved it. And I still miss that aircraft, um, but I I don't got all the money in the world, so. Where it is. Yeah. Let's uh, take a look. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the in the cabin. can actually open the door and close it from, from here. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see. Isn't there any way I can open this door? Hmm. I can't seem to find the, the right place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go into the cabin here. Okay, that's attention to detail, you can say. Can move those around. <coughs> and even push the button. Okay. Go through the cabin here. Guess it's going to be better when we actually get some um, electricity inside the aircraft. Let's get to the front here and see if we can get it running. Somehow I'm able. There we go. The aircraft got alive. So let's work back inside. on the light individually. So it is actually uh, um, well simulated in here that we actually ha can adjust the air vent ventilation as well as switching on and off the, the light for the individual seats. Um, <laughs> yeah, there are those that like it and those that do not like it. Um, and I have to admit that it's nice if effects and such, however, in the end, how many is sitting in here, also just because the, the cabin is, is so, um, it's, it's like you are the only passenger on board, <laughs> if it should be made uh, in a nice manner. I would guess it could be nice if there, uh, if that was what you liked, then um, there could be populated with people in some of the seats and such. And probably if you then came to the seat just like for the cockpit, I mean it is uh, where uh, it is possible uh, if you do not have an, an visual, <coughs> you're missing a um, a direct X file, no, not uh, the Visual Studio files. You would see that you are looking through the um, pilot's eyes and such, and it could be nice if you then could move in, and and you wouldn't see if you sit in a given position, you wouldn't see uh, that person. Um, so it would be some kind of the same effect. But a distance it could be seen, but. Again, it is simulating the aircraft, and that, and, and I feel that this is where the main focus should be. The other is just some nice to have, but in the end, you might use it a few times and then say that uh, it was it. Okay. You can hear the individual sounds here. Bell signs are on and the lighting is on. Here we go. Gonna remove the static elements <coughs> and it just looks so nice. It is so amazing. Also, if you just take a walk out here. If we look at this during the night time I'm sure it would look amazing for the effects of the lighting and such. Um, try to switch the time here. Now 
Let's go back in time here. And let's see how it actually looks during the, the night. It looks so amazing, especially at this airport as well. That also makes it shiny. Nice. It really looks like being close to the main aircraft. The de attention to detail is great. You can see how it all nicely is connected and we can make a inspection of the inner you can even see all the pipelines and 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 such the hydraulics and such of course there are a few things but um, it's not noticed anyway if you are in a uh, given uh, position then you would not even notice it so it's very nice um, and by the way if you know me I am not always a huge fan of of the Carnado and Alabia stuff um, for the most part, I have been more happy with the Alapeo performance than the Caronado, but again, um, Caronado is really um, improving, and I have been writing a review about the craft for the. Um, it was the. Um, an aircraft for FSX and prepared. Um, I can't remember the name right now um, that I actually did for my Ellen Flight magazine um, where I actually I was a bit critical but again I also uh, been fairly and tried to give some constructive feedback as well as I'm doing right here because it really looks amazing from a visual perspective. Then of course we can come back to the way that the aircraft is handling and flying and, and all those things. And now we, that we got the evening, let's try to um, get some um, lighting going here so we actually can see how it actually all works here um, during the dark hours. Um, oh, that was my mistake. Sorry. Compass lighting. And as I've been mentioning, we are exploring together here because um, I'm not used to this aircraft at, uh, at all. I'm really not. Um, Batteries charge off. We don't it is available. Generators are off. Should be. Um, window heat also off. Let's be. We're not using those at the moment. What do we have fuel? Start getting the engine running so we can actually get things working here. Indian fire protection avionics. Can check the voltage here for the given perspective here. Okay. There we go. That resolve. 
and here we got the engine starter panel um, and down here we got some of the lighting as far as I remember it yeah we do there we go um, because I actually have been flying from an FSX uh, not the Fokker 50 I was actually flying the Fokker 60 um, by another developer Doom light. there we go now we got some lighting in here so now it looks nice and shiny see the differences in the light intensity looks very nice it can be adjusted for both sides for both the pilot and the co-pilot that's nice and now I see that I have <coughs> switched the position here um, as you can actually do that in um, in this um, this aircraft um, <coughs> and there we go got it back <laughs> just had to just figure it out here because it's a long time since I've been flying the fucker so I have to get used to it again okay so now we actually got the lighting going on here and then we can move into the cabin and try to demonstrate the lighting in here um, it's not that it can't see it that much but uh, it's also due to the um, configuration of the lighting of course um, and I would have to go even further into that over time now we're just looking at the main project as it is and then um, we would use the aircraft for some uh, full flights um, in order to discover it even further now we are looking through the main project um, so you have a um, visual reference of how it is at the moment. Okay, next up would be to actually get the engine running and um, we would need to do that, um, now I have to see if I can get it running. Ignition, just our start ignition on. There we go. We've got rotation. We 
got the engine number two running, and it was pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, it actually was just the start and the ignition, and then it actually would would do its thing. Try to do the left hand as well. See if we actually can get it up and running. We can switch on the generator for the second engine. I thought you should be holding the uh, the button, but it seems that it actually is, is doing its thing. Right now it's not starting, and it's because this is in the shut off position and not in the start. There we go. Sorry for that. So here we go. Um, so now we actually have the engine up and running. So that's actually how it is sounding when it's idling. We can then switch off the um, ground power unit as it's no longer required in order for us to keep it running here. It was switched on, yes, this generator. Nice. Let's see. There we go. Voltage checking. Load. Nice. Okay. Um, lead. Air. Closed. Open. And we can set some air in here so the cabin can get some heat in here as well. has it up and running and as you can see it isn't that difficult to to uh, go from a default aircraft and over to an aircraft like this it is actually um, quite easy um, about the navigation um, it is done with a stock FMS of explain that you would need to to use in order to do flight plans and such. Um, and that is um, how it can be set up. Uh, it also has integration is it for TGN 750? I mean it is um, right out of the box um, and I would say if I have had that project I guess I would have used it more than the stock FMS uh, uh, but um, that is how it is it is the stock FMS that is implemented into the aircraft even I Sometimes I feel that uh, it's just as good as have uh, just as good having an, an GPS. But anyway, anyway, uh, FMS nice. Okay, and let's take the autopilot uh, the panel here because here you got the the, um, the altitude bug that you can adjust um, as well as the main approaches it is just like my autopilot project but I'm not using my autopilot project for this demonstration video and I'm doing that on purpose so you actually see what you actually get right out of the box even though my project I guess would work with it I actually have tested that uh, my altitude is switching so I'm happy about that but I'm not mentioning more about it right now uh, I can just say that 
uh, uses that uses hardware units and such would be happy that it is possible to to get it working. Um, um, yeah, you can switch between um, the arc, full arc map mode. You can zoom in and out. Uh, set the um, Ground speed or the TTG um, flight director command mo uh, button, um, and what those buttons here actually does is it is doing what you would normally know from the DPS, um, which source it is using whenever it is the FMS, if it is NAV one or NAV two. Uh, so it so it's the the same. Uh, as you would know from the stock uh, GPS, if you have that in your mind, you would know that FMS is just following the F D FMS, and NAV1 that you are using the NAV with the uh, VR and, and those things. You have the ability to switch the source over here as well. Um, there is this function where it actually switch between the map and uh, weather radar if I'm not mistaken it's actually what it's mentioning um, yeah that's that's where it is um, and you have those options as well um, the autopilot mode, altitude selected, uh, adjusting the course and the course two and the course one can be adjusted here. Um, so that's how it is. Um, gonna, I'm gonna do this. this would fly with Luma, my scripts, there we go, to keep it clean. <coughs> um, in reality, normally, I'm um, pressing in the middle with this, but yeah. Autopilot engaged, and here you got the the pitch for the climb descent. You turn your damper engagement. Um, here you got the flex temperature that you can adjust, or use the stock um, parameters for the engines. speeds and you can just click and drag so we can move them to whatever it might be 180 is different is the uh, maximum speed of the flaps 5 is flap 5 and uh, as far as I remember it was from the references So that is nice. And this is working. Traffic. Doors. Doors are closed. Here we go. 
then we don't have that. Okay. Pop up and you can adjust those. That's that's pretty neat. <laughs> Just like it is PA system. Just nice, nice touches. Hmm. Just looks like a dummy. Okay. Out of feather. <laughs> Testing. And over speed protection. Smoke test. Got it. Let's take it for a short spin here, so you actually have a a reference of the particular aircraft. And um, of course, I have to. Oops, that was my mistake there. I apologize. There we go. Um, See the wind light and special light actually lit up the window. There we got the sound from the flaps. As well as you can hear the nice sound of the engines here. And yes, um, now we are not going to, to do um, correct procedure. We're just gonna depart and then um, fly a bit and then we would land and that would be it for this video. It's just to give you a general impression of the main pocket. Um, because we are already up around nearly 40 minutes right now of recording time. But I think I would take it through the given uh, stages, so you actually could get an, an impression if in, uh, instead of just watching a video that is short and then you still sit and say, hmm, is it worth it, is it not for me or not, um, that's what I try to beyond here and yes I am limited to a, a, a joystick as it is so you know why it is a bit not that great braking and, and, and steering as such. Okay, let's 
get the aircraft in the air here. And they were to the Okay, sound. There we go. Here's up. Ready. Nice aircraft. Really looks amazing here. Flying out of Albor. It's an amazing uh, airport pr uh, project and it's an amazing aircraft rendition. Even though there are areas where the aircraft just looks a bit odd with the coloring and such, but it is how the aircraft is. It, it looks a bit Weird. It's not what you are used to from from a lot of um, aircrafts. I really hear that uh, we are retracting the, the flaps there. You really hear when you are doing those things. Um, I know I'm not doing like some other people are doing for FSX or prepared, where they would try to do stalls and all that kind of stuff because you don't really get any impression of it. Also the handling of the aircraft here other than if you actually are flying it yourself with your specific hardware but in general here you can see that right, right now I'm using full right aileron full left aileron and it's nice that the aircraft is not just moving too quickly because then it just feels like a paper aircraft and, and that's certainly not what it is uh, so it feels kind of heavy and it is nice Because in reality, aircraft isn't just responding uh, always that rapidly like it is sometimes in the simulator. And yes, some of it is due to, uh, in reality, you have the forces uh, that are f is affecting the main aircraft that you cannot have here as we are down to flying with a, a yoke like I'm doing right now. I'm just having a yoke to do uh, all the uh, maneuvers here. So uh, I, I use both for the rudder and, and the pitches, pitch of the aircraft. Now we are coming in here for our main landing. One thing you would know is that the airspeed is not dropping that quickly. Um, it tends to actually keep that airspeed for a time, but I know now when we use flaps, it will decrease, as you can see. So it is um, a special technique. Um, you should should use where you actually should try to get the speed down even though and then try to get the flaps into safe operation the area and then use the flaps so it's a different experience from what you might be used to from other types of aircraft because in this particular aircraft um, do not have flaps, so you can't just use those. Uh, sorry, not uh, spoilers, I should say. You don't have spoilers, but you could just be using.
one it's a bit, a bit of an, a short sound for the landing gear, I would say. When Okay. Now we would land at the same runway as we came from, so we would make a left hand turn here. And then um, get ourselves ready for our landing here. Five hundred. Five hundred, cross checked, and we are doing just fine here. Four hundred. A bit high, but it would improve in a moment. Sink rate. Sink rate. Can you see? Sink rate. Sink rate. Just dropped. Um, here we go. Oops. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Oops. That was not that great of a landing. <laughs> I actually thought that we actually could um, have idled it all the way down, but you actually saw that in the end it just uh, was a bit too much. The brakes are very effective, as you can say, as you can see. Here we go. But one of the other things is that I actually have to to learn the height of the main air aircraft. Um, as well as it depends on my reference position um, for it. But it was a narrow um, runway we were using there. I know that I have to 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 um, adjust a few things here before we really take it uh, for some some flights. Um, but right now, you have seen the aircraft interior exterior, and also during night time, and um, I hope it give you an, an impression of the main project that Carnado has done here. Um, I would say it's a, a, a nice look. Uh,
but I also want to stay as objective as possible. So I'm not gonna mention um, what I feel in general about it because it should be up to the end user other than what I have already have said um, because it is up to you what you actually like and dislike um, and not me just saying well you should buy this or not buy this um, that's up to you to decide but once again thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed our main flight here and that you got a general impression of the main uh, project and you can then decide if you like it or not but thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon bye bye